So today you got exercise 213, which is very much a continuation of exercise 212. I know that you're all to the point where you have your sides, but I think in the interest of repetition and practice, I'm going to start from the very beginning and go all the way through one more time. Uh, this time I will actually go as far as creating the pieces that we would go laser cut. Um, and then next class, I'll go cut them out and assemble them so that you can see what they look like when they're assembled and kind of the basic strategies for how you assemble them. Um, so I pulled up a different piece of terrain in the world of SketchUp. This time uh, it's a little piece from Yosemite. Um, again, not overly steep, uh, especially in my live example. I don't want to do something with too much, though the, the really steep ones always look better when you do the physical model. Um, but uh, in the interest of my demonstration, I think a simple one is better. I've gone ahead and I've gone to the file menu and I've gone to save as and I, I have saved it as a SketchUp 2013 file. Let me make sure that we do that. And then I'll go ahead and I'll open up Rhino and once again this is a large object inches. Go ahead and say open. And I have my Rhino file open now. And now it's a matter of bringing that piece of SketchUp terrain into Rhino. And again, this is all repetition. So I'll go to File, Import. And I'm going to pick the Yosemite file here. And we'll go ahead and say OK. And it will come in. There it is. And I need to convert this from a mesh object. So first thing I'll do is clean up my layers a bit. We'll get rid of everything except layer 0 and the default layer. I'm going to rename layer 0 to be Google Mesh or Terrain Mesh or something like that. Let me rename the default layer to be Contour X. And let's show this as a shaded mode. I'll make sure Contour X is active. And then I'll use the Contour command of the mesh going off in this direction. We'll try 75 feet. Too tight. Try 100. One hundred feet, that'll work. I'll do the contour. Let me create a new layer called contour Y. Y. It's active. Start at the same point, going off 100 feet again, and there's that. So at this point, we can turn off the Google Mesh and look down on our object, and do a little cleanup. So we're going to have plenty of space, so I'll be aggressive about it. And then we'll clean up the, the leftover little lines here. We don't need them. I'm just pressing the delete key while I do this. All right, so I have those. At this point, I'll save. So I'll go to File, Save As. And we're going to save this into today's folder, which is 213. And this is fall of 2016. Go ahead and save. Then I'm going to make this into an actual surface. So let me create a new layer. And this is terrain surface. Make that active. I'll select these curves. And we'll go up to um, surface curve network. Yes, we're going to do it anyway. We'll go ahead and say OK. And we'll let it build. While it's doing that, I'm going to pull up that um, the worksheet from last class. I 
Actually, I can pull it up from today because it's on the bottom of your uh, your sheet for today. There it is right there. We'll use that as our uh, guide here in a little bit. There it is. All right, let me go back to Rhino. Let's see if it's finished. It has. I'm going to make sure that I get only the surface selected. And this is, again, an, uh, an exercise in patience because it's always very slow when you try to do this. just the surface selected. I'm going to type rebuild. And I'm going to rebuild at 100 by 100. And say OK. And that gives me a surface that I can actually work with. So we'll turn off the contour x and contour y. And we now have a very nice clean surface that I can work from. If it needs to be rebuilt a little bit further to smooth it out. This would be our opportunity to do this. For right now, it seems reasonable for what I'm trying to do, so I'm going to go with it. Okay. So at this point, remember, it's all about the physical model and using the little cheat sheet on the bottom of your handout to make sure that we get to the right size um, final model. So I'm going to work in the top view, and I'm going to show shaded so that I can kind of see the, the terrain here a little bit. And I'm going to guess that a 1 to 200 would fit nicely. Uh, and so at 11 by 17 scale, if I were to pull up the little cheat sheet here, uh, and we were looking at 1 to 200 right there, right? we come across, and I'd be 2200 by 3400 would be my 11 by 17. So let me, in Rhino, do a rectangle at 3400 feet by 2200 feet. And it would help, oops, at 3,400 feet, 2,200 feet. There we go. And I'm going to move this rectangle over my object so that I get a good selection. Sometimes you have to kind of look at it in the top view. I want to make sure that I have enough uh, terrain to warrant doing something kind of interesting. Um, so once I have the rectangle in place, I'm going to project that rectangle onto my surface. So I'll go up to Curve, Curve from Objects, Project, or I could just type Project. I'll select my surface, and I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And at this point, I can see what my terrain actually looks like. Okay. So I'm going to change my rectangle location. I'm not quite happy with that one. So let me come back. And let me just move this. I'm going to move this up and over a little bit. And then I'll project again onto the surface. Yeah, I wanted this little hump so that you can see what happens when I glue it together. Okay, so. I'm being specific about what I'm picking. So there it is. I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess surface that I don't need. So let me go to Trim. We'll get rid of the excess surface. Now that is the surface that I'm going to make as part of my uh, file here. Okay. So I have this established. And now it's going to be a matter of contouring this surface oops, by my contour interval. And so if we go back to my um, cheat sheet here, we're at the 1 to 200 scale. If I come over here, my material thickness is going to be 5 30 seconds of an inch. Therefore, I'll come down to the 1 to 200 scale, and I get 31.250 feet is what my contour interval is going to be. So I'll go ahead and go back to the contour command. And I'm going to contour this object. I will start 
right there. And it needs to be in the z direction. So I have to make sure that I'm going up in the z direction like that. And my distance between contours is going to be 31.250 feet. And we'll cut up this particular piece. So that looks pretty good. Okay. At this point, I'm going to create a new layer for topo lines. And I should have put those on the topo lines layer. So let me change the object layer, which will let me turn off the surface. And I have just the lines left. Okay. Now I need to do the stepping sides, exactly like you did. So we're catching up very quickly to where we left off last class. But I'm going to do the stepping sides. And I'm going to do those using the C-plane shift method. So I'll start right here on this side. I'm going to go to this little triangle. I'm going to go to set C-plane, three points. We'll start right here, go off in the, uh, in this case it's the Y direction and then go straight up in the z direction. There it is. We can see my little grid is nicely in place. So at this point, I'm going to create a new layer for sides. I'll make it active. And I'm going to start to draw using smart tracking my side here. So I'll go ahead and finish there. There's some steps. We'll do the same thing. So I'm going to reset. So I'll go back to, let's make this big so we can see it. I'll go back to set C plane world top. That resets the C plane to the regular ground. Then I'll go back and set C plane three points again. We'll start right here. We'll go off in this direction. And we'll go straight up in that direction. My C plane shifted. And then we'll go ahead. And in this case, those are even. So I'll go straight across. And then I'm going to go down to meet up with this next contour right there. And I'll work my way down this side as well there. Now here's one where I can't go straight across. I need to make a step down. I know what my contour interval is, which is 31.250 feet. So I'll type 31.25 feet down over and then back up. You should never go straight across more than once. There should always be a step at every contour, up or down. So then we'll start working our way back up this side. As we come across here, those two are at the same place. So we'll do that again. And then it's 31.250 down. 31.250 feet down. And then I'm just going to actually pull this straight off to the side. Sometimes that's easier when we get to the corners. Okay. Now I'll set reset my C plane so we can go down this side. So I'll go back to set C plane, world top. And then I'll set C plane three points. Start right here. Go off in that direction. And then straight up and down. C plane set correctly. And we'll go ahead and start our step down. So here, 
because of that tiny little piece, we're going to go down 31.250 feet down, over, and back up. We'll come straight across to that point, and then we're going to go down to meet up with this point there. And I'm going to go down one more time, 31.250 feet, and I'm going to let it go off to one side. At a certain point, it will help with the corners if I, if I leave the ends long. But if I don't, it's not the end of the world. Okay. So in this case, along the front, I'm going to do the front, but I again want to reset my C-plane. So we'll go back to set C-plane, world top, and then set C-plane, three points. I'll start right there on the end of this point, go off in this direction and go straight up. And then we can go ahead and start again. Now this one's a little tricky. I don't have a lot of lines to guide. So I'm going to start right here and go straight across. Then I'm going to go down 31.250 feet. And then I'm going to go over until I meet this point. I'll come up until I meet this point. There. I'll go straight over. And then I'm going to go down 31.25 feet, and I'll go off in space that way. Okay. And one of the things that you can do if you're struggling with what happens is go ahead and turn back on the surface, and it'll give you an idea of what's happening. And generally speaking, your steps are either going to be going down from the surface or above the surface. And so if I, if I kind of go around at every line, I'm going down. Right, which will help you kind of sort it out and visualize it. So let's look more carefully at the corners. So I told you thus far, um, and what you worked on last class, was to get the steps going up and down the sides correct, but that we would have to come back and revisit what's happening at the corners. And in some cases, the corners are really easy in that two, you know, one contour meets nicely at exactly at a corner. Okay? All too often, they don't work nicely. And so we have to kind of sort through what's happening at the various corners. So since I'm already set up for the front, let's look at the front corner here. So here, uh, the way that the terrain works, if I were to turn it on, is it goes to this point, which is the same height as that point, and then it goes down across this little valley, okay? which means that the corner point is going to be lower than either of these two points. So. I've already established an extra step and made that line long. I need the same thing right here. So we'll go down 31.25 feet there. And then we'll come over until those two lines meet. Okay. Once they meet, we can trim. So I'll take this. We'll trim that piece of the line. And now they meet nicely at one corner. And we can work our way around. So let's come over to this piece. And once again, I already left that one strong. But this is going to have to go down negative 31.25 and then over. But I have to reset my C-plane first. So let me go to set C-plane, world top. Set C-plane, three points. Start again here. Straight up. There it is. And now from this point right here, we're going to go down 31.25 feet. And we'll go over until we meet up with this line. And if you did it correctly, the perpendicular lines should match up at the same elevation. So we'll go ahead and we'll take this and we'll trim that piece off there. So we've worked our way around. There's our first corner. We go up, over, down. We come up, 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 down. There we are. We come over to this piece, and then we start to go up again. Now I have to do this corner. So I'll start at this point, and we'll go with a long line off that corner. And this needs to go down and then over to meet this line. So once again, I'll reset the C-plane. Go to world top. We'll go to set C-plane, three points. Go there, we'll go straight up. And now at this point, we're going to go from here down three 
31.25 feet. Is. We'll come over till we meet them. And then we'll trim that piece. Okay. So now we get to the very last piece. I've already left this one long. This one just needs to go from right there, perpendicular, till it meets. And then we'll go ahead and trim one more time. Oops. Trim. Right there. And so now I've worked my way all the way around this shape. And I have steps that work all the way around as well. So now on each side, I'm going to make sure that all of the pieces are joined. So that whole section is selected. We'll type join. And that will be joined into one curve. This plus this is going to join into one curve. This plus this plus this going to join into one curve. And now this plus this is also going to join in to one curve. Okay. So now that I've drawn out these, let me reset my C plane to the very top here. Let me go to set C plane, world top. There it is. I'm going to find wherever my lowest point is in this little model. And so my lowest point is this corner right here. Okay. Some of you may have a low point in the middle. That's OK, too. We just want to find where the lowest point is. And once we find the lowest point, we're going to draw a line going straight down. And so my C plane is currently in the XY, so I can't draw a line straight down unless I move into one of the side views like this. And I can type in any value that I want for here. This is just thickness of my overall. It needs to be thicker than one piece of cardboard, so thicker than 31.25. Let's do two, uh, which would be um, 62.5 um, feet, okay, which is a double length, and we'll go straight down. Okay? That's going to re represent the first side here. And so now I'll go straight over until I match up with that corner. Now it's really hard to do it because my x and the y, or my, my c plane, isn't set up. So I'm just going to go long again. And then I'll draw again from here straight down perpendicular. And there it is. And we'll go ahead and trim off that piece. Okay. So let me go ahead and take this plus this plus this, and I'll join that together. So now that represents one of the sides of the piece that I'm ultimately going to cut. Okay, Let's start with this side. I'll start with a polyline. I'll come down to meet that. I'll go over too long. I'll start with this upper corner, and I'll come down perpendicular to meet it. And we can trim that off. And we'll go ahead and take this plus this plus this, and type join. Right? Notice I do have duplicate lines in the corner, right? because the two sides meet up next to each other. All right, so I've got that side. Let's do this next one. We'll start with polyline. We'll go straight down to there. We'll go off in space over here, enter. And we'll go from this corner straight down to there. And then we'll go ahead and trim right there. And then let's take this and this, and we'll join this piece together. OK, so I've made three of the four sides. Let's do the last side. We'll go right down there, over, and back up, enter. I'll select this plus this, and I'm going to join those two together as well. So at this stage, I've essentially made all of the pieces of my um, topography. Okay, So now it's a matter of getting them ready to laser cut and, and getting them flat and that sort of thing. Okay, So this is probably a pretty good time to save the work. So I'll go ahead and save it. And then I'm going to go ahead and do Rotate 3D to move these pieces right, or rotate them flat. 
So let me go ahead and type rotate 3D. We'll start with this piece. My axis of rotation will be the bottom. And I'll go from vertical to horizontal, like that. Okay. I'll do this with each piece. Again, axis of rotation here. And we'll fold it flat. One of the key things, though, is to make sure that you fold them all the same way. So I could fold them in, or I could fold them out, but they all have to go the same direction. Otherwise, you'll, you'll confuse yourself down the road. All right, so now all of those are flat. And if I were to look at them in the top view, we can see all of them right here. I'm going to move them away just a little bit so you can see each of those will ultimately be the sides of my topo okay so now I have the topo but it's in three dimensions I need all of these lines to go flat so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer and I'll call this new layer let's put it at the bottom here call this new layer laser cut And underneath laser cut, I'm going to have two sub layers. One is going to be red for cut, and I could say cut. And the other sub layer is going to be blue, which is engraved. Okay. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and make the red layer red. So I'll click on the color, choose red. And blue, I'll click on the color, and I'll choose blue. Okay. So these pieces, I already know, are going to be cut out. So we'll go ahead and select all four of those and move them to be on the red layer. So I'll go to Change Object Layer, and they're now ultimately going to be cut out. But what I want is I want all of these topo lines to be flat on the ground plane. So you remember back a couple lectures, what I did is I created a flat ground plane, and I projected all of those lines onto the ground. So let me go ahead and create a plane. bigger than my object, like that. And in the top view, I'm going to select everything except for the side. I'm going to make sure that my red layer, my cut layer, well, let's make sure blue is active. And I'll go ahead and project onto this surface. And I will end up with a set of blue lines that are perfectly flat. So at this point, let's go ahead and turn off the topo lines and the sides. And what we end up with is our nice blue set of contours and our red cutouts here. Okay, I need to make sure that this is contained with a box, because obviously when we cut out the pieces, we need to have the sides. So I'll go ahead and draw a box from that corner to that corner. Okay, so it's contained in a box. Okay. Now, in order to do the method that I'm going to use, and let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to grab one of the examples out of my office. Hold on a second. Sometimes you need a piece, OK? So we have the four sides that are folded flat, right? And now we have the contours that are all labeled, all right, are all shown in blue here. Now, if I were to go cut this out right now, all of these contours, they wouldn't stack up on each other because they'd all be cut out individually. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this out twice, and we're going to alternate which one is being cut and which one is being engraved. engraved. So this will make more sense as it starts to come together. Okay? But what I'll do is I'll make a second copy of this entire piece. So I'll take this whole thing, and I'm going to copy it. Let me put it here. And I'm going to move this for now just out of the way. OK, so I have two versions. Let's look at it in the top view. And we'll start with the highest point right here. So in this version, I'm going to select every other contour. So I have this point, and sometimes you have to 
turn back on the surface to see, wait, which one's higher and which one's lower. Right? And actually, technically, this is the highest point. So I'm going to work my way down, selecting every other curve. Right? I'm working my way down. It would be this. And this goes. See, the reason I picked a tricky one is that even I have to think about it, right? So let me go back into my perspective view here. Let me turn back on my uh, terrain for just a second so we can kind of look. Turn off my terrain, turn on my topo lines. All right, so this one goes back up. That's fine. This one right here. is higher than that layer, so that one gets selected as well. Okay, So it's kind of this weird thing. Okay, let me turn these back off. So I have every other line selected. Oh, I have to go back up this way, right, like that. And I'm going to move these layers that I have selected onto the red cut layer. So I'll right click and say Change Object Layer. And now those are all red. Okay, so and let me make the border. Oops, I missed that one needs to be red too. All right, so the border here also needs to be red, so let's change that object like that. Okay. Now in the version that's up here, I'm going to do the opposite. So this time I'm going to select this curve, and I'll work my way back up. Okay, selecting the opposite curves, that one. Here and here and here. Okay, so the exact opposite, I'll make these red. Change object layer. Now those are red. Again, I need the border. Change object layer. And there it is. So I should be able to look, let's look at it straight down in the top view, and pick any one object. So the center circle, they're opposite colors. Okay, this and this are opposites this and this are opposites. Does that make sense? So it should be direct opposites of each other. And what this will allow us to do is when we actually cut out the piece and we glue it together, we'll have two side by side and we'll take one from each pile and we're kind of like shuffling a deck of cards. Put them together, which will allow it to glue together and hold versus just floating in space. Okay. So when I, when I actually cut it out and glue it together and you see me glue it together, it'll start to make sense for how it comes together. Okay. So. I now have the two base pieces put together, but I also need to accommodate one more thing. And that is, when you look at the side here, see how there's thickness to the cardboard? And this cardboard has to come together. The way I drew this, these two corners are exactly the same point. So I'd either have to miter the corner, or I have to compensate for the thickness of the cardboard. So the easiest thing to do is to compensate for the thickness of the cardboard. We know that the cardboard thickness, because of our little cheat sheet here, is 31.25. So on two of the same sides, and it doesn't matter whether it's the short or the long, I'm going to cut off 31.25 inches. Right? So let me start here. I keep snapping funny here. I'll just go over 30, 31.25 there, and we'll go right there. Thirty-one point two five feet. Go right there. Thirty-one point two five feet. There. And 31 feet, right there. Okay. Now I need to trim off those excess pieces. So let me go ahead and type trim. We'll use my, oops, select all my blue lines here. And then we'll go ahead and trim. There we 
go. Let me explode these because I had these little tails on them. We can get rid of those. So now I've compensated. Again, these need to be all on the cut layer, change object layer, and we'll go ahead and join those together so that they're all continuous joints. So that now accommodates the thickness of the uh, cardboard. Okay. So now I have all my pieces together, and it's time to actually do the scale to get this down to size. Okay. So we know a variety of pieces of information because we plan this ahead of time. We know that the overall size from here to here would be 17 inches. We know that one step would be 5 30 seconds of an inch. Okay? So all we really have to do at this point is select everything, type scale, it's going to be a uniform scale, and we'll pick one of these dimensions. So from here to there needs to be 17 inches. Okay, so I'll type 17 inches, enter. Everything disappears because it went from being 3,400 feet to 17 inches. So before you move on, type Z for zoom, followed by S for selected, and you'll now see your drawing, but it's scaled to go be cut now. Okay, so it's no longer full size, which also presents a problem because we can't go back to the original terrain and really see. There's such different sizes that it gets a little complicated. So let me do a few other things. I'm going to go ahead and draw a box, and this is going to represent the bed of the laser cutter. So I'll say at, and remember now I'm at normal inches. So this is at 24 inches, comma, 12 inches. That's then the bed of the laser cutter. Let's put that on the laser cut layer here. Change object layer, there we go. And I will use as many of these as I need to fit all of my objects. All right. So I'll probably put this one on the first. All right. Give yourself a little bit of space around the laser cutter. Don't put your object right in the corner. It doesn't cut all the way to the edges. Let's take this one and let's move it close as well. All right, something like that. Those two are there. Now I need to fit these pieces on. So we'll move this piece up. Like that. We'll move this piece up. It doesn't matter how they fit on the page. They just all need to actually fit. Okay. I would prefer not to rotate them just because uh, long term you'll run into questions about which way they actually fit and, and how they rotate. Okay, so I've now fit them on three sheets. This will mean that you, out of one sheet from the bookstore, you can make two cut pages. So this means that I need to buy two sheets from the bookstore. I think they're like $3 or $4 a piece. It's co gonna cost me eight bucks to do this, right? Once I have this ready, we'll select all of my objects, and I'll go to File, Export Selected, which is only gonna export these lines. And I'm gonna save this not as a Rhino file, but as an AutoCAD DWG file. And so we'll go ahead and go into today's folder. And this is going to be 136 uh, x 213 laser cut. I'll go ahead and click Save. 2004 polylines is your export scheme. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And this then will write the AutoCAD file that we need to take over to the laser cutter to cut this out in the first place. Okay? There is supposed to be, starting this week, staff available to help you do your laser cutting. I don't have current uh, names as to who's running it this particular semester, but somebody should be there. There will probably be a sign-up sheet on the outside of the door that will help you sign up for times. If there isn't, there may be a list of emails with people who have access to it and will help you cut. You can email them and set up a time for you to start cutting. Okay? Uh, leave yourself some time because you, your first cut might not turn out correctly. You may go to glue it and it might not work. 
uh, in which case you need to come back and make some corrections. Yeah. How long in general does it take to cut the topo? It doesn't take very long to cut the topo. I'd say um, depending on the complexity, anywhere from five minutes to 20 minutes. Uh, but it's pretty fast because you're cutting, uh, basically you're just outlining each of the contours. It's not like when you guys did like the Calder Museum and you did the trusses and it like cut forever on all those little trusses. This is pretty simple compared to it. Okay. It's also cutting cardboard so it can move pretty fast. Um, I don't know what the current best settings for cardboard are. It depends on how dirty the lenses are and whatever. The people who do the cutting who work there will know what the best settings are and will advise you on, on what the ideal settings are uh, for doing this. Okay. So next class, we'll have our normal lecture and I'll talk about some of the stuff that we're going to be doing um, after that. But I will also go ahead and cut sample um, files and I'll sit in the back and we'll do a little mini lecture and I'll show you how to glue it together so that you can see it kind of live. On the website, uh, and I forget which day it's listed under, it may be listed under today's date. Let me see. Here's an old one, um, the assembly. Um, looks like I have a couple different ones. Right, I forget which one it is. There's one that's pretty funny because somebody gave me a um, uh, glue bottle that explodes on me in the middle of, of putting it together. But if you can't wait for me to go through it, um, this is a, a, a demonstration of, of how you would go about uh, putting it together. I think this might be the one where the glue bottle explodes. Yeah, there you go. It's always good, right? Fun when you're on video, right? <laughs> Again, I'm just going to alternate, pick the next piece. Watch. Right? And I'll glue along the edge. This bottle's killing me. There. And I'll glue across here. Oh. See, it happens to the best of us, right? This is, this is where it's fun when you're on video, right? So anyway. <laughs> um, so. So I will, I will do another one live. My hope is that somebody will have glue. Um, I used to have glue and blades and uh, X-Acto knives and everything, but they've managed to walk away over the last eight years. Uh, people have borrowed them and not returned them, which is fine, but that means that I have to borrow it from one of you. Uh, so hopefully somebody will bring something next class um, so that I can use it and I'll show you the gluing together. Okay? There's a few tricks that will help you actually put it together. Uh, but if you can't wait that long or whatever, know that it is already posted here and, and you can watch it um, there. The strategy is the same. Uh, the one other thing that I'll add before I let you go and start working today is that we're focusing this specifically on doing a laser cut piece of topography. Okay? You could use this exact same method at a larger scale using a sheet of plywood or a couple sheets of plywood. It's very efficient in the use of material which will let you glue things together very quickly and, and not use too much material. But you could make a topo as big as one of these tables if you wanted to using the same method. Okay? So uh, there's a few tweaks to it. Obviously, you wouldn't use the laser cutter, but you could use the router or something instead. Um, and you just want to be aware that those, those exist for you. Okay? Are there any questions? Right? I'm sorry to have gone all the way start to finish, but sometimes it helps to see the whole thing all the way through. All right?